Welcome to Rationality, Reason, and Reality. I'm Supernova. Today I'm going to discuss a couple more logical fallacies, and unlike the ones I've been discussing in the past, these ones are formal fallacies. That means they've taken the, the form of the syllogism wrong. If you remember back to my tutorial about inductive and deductive logic, I discussed your typical logical syllogism and how it works. And I showed that with Venn diagrams, and because I'm talking about formal fallacies, I'm going to show them with Venn diagrams again to make this easier to understand exactly why they're wrong. The first one I'm going to discuss is called illicit major, and it goes like this. Uh, premise 1, all D or M. Premise 2, no C or D. Conclusion, therefore, no C or M. Now, you could stick any letters you like in here. I, I didn't use the one straight from Wikipedia or any philosophy guide because I wanted it to fit better with my examples so you could follow along. Premise 1, all dogs are mammals. True. Premise 2, no cats are dogs. Also true. Conclusion, therefore, no cats are mammals. False. So if we have true proof, two true premises and they don't necessarily lead to the conclusion, then there must be something wrong with the form of this. What it's implying is that the group of all dogs is within the group of all mammals, but because cats don't overlap with dogs, it must not overlap with mammals either. Where we know the truth is that the group of mammals includes both cats and dogs that don't overlap. Now, while the, why this is called the illicit major is that the major term, the one that everything's grouped inside, that is mammals, hasn't been defined until the conclusion. And you have to define exactly where everything sits before you get to the conclusion. Otherwise, you could have this confusion and not know which form this takes. So since these premises could lead to either one of these conclusions, it's fallacy. You, you can't necessarily know that the conclusion is true because it would be pointing to either one of these because the major term was not distributed correctly. A uh, Christian example of this, because that's what I do, uh, might include uh, all Catholics are Christian. No Protestants are Catholics, therefore no Protestants are Christian. And I imagine a lot of Catholics believe this, but it's not true. Uh, Protestants, Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Mormons, you know, they all fit in the, the dictionary definition of Christian because they all worship Christ. And, and it doesn't matter. It, it, uh, Protestants believe the same thing about Christ, uh, Catholics because Catholics aren't Protestants. They, they must also sit outside the group of Christians. And that's just not true. They're committing the fallacy of illicit major. The other one I'm going to discuss is called illicit minor. No big surprise. Premise one, P is T. Premise 2, P is U. Conclusion, therefore, all T or U. The example that we're going to use is premise 1, pi is tasty. Premise 2, pi is unhealthy. Conclusion, therefore, all tasty things are unhealthy. Now what they're suggesting here is that there's a group of all unhealthy things and inside that are tasty things and pi sits in there. But that's not the case. Not everything that's tasty is unhealthy. Now, this is called illicit minor because the minor term, pi, hasn't been defined. We haven't exactly placed it within the groups. There are two ways it could go in this case. Pi could sit in the group of all things that are unhealthy that sit inside the group of all things that are tasty. Or, what is actually the case, you have the groups of things that are tasty and the groups of things that are unhealthy. And there's a little overlap in which pi sits. There are some things that are unhealthy and tasty, and pi just happens to be one of them. And so because you don't know which conclusion it's pointing to, it's a fallacy. It doesn't necessarily lead to the conclusion. An example of this uh, might include uh, premise one, Satanists are devil worshippers, which is obviously true. It's true by definition. Premise two, Satanists are unbelievers. Conclusion, therefore, all unbelievers are devil worshippers. This isn't true. And I know a lot of Christians that actually believe it is. They think just because they sit uh, in, in the, the larger group of unbelievers that includes things like 
devil worshippers that all of us must worship the devil. Most of us don't believe in the devil. It's, it's a silly idea. And you're committing the fallacy of illicit minor. So I, I hope you learned something. I hope this was a, a good method for showing you. And tomorrow I'm going to go over one more for, formal fallacy. One, because it's, it's going to take five minutes. It's very important. And uh, I hope you'll tune in. Till then, peace.